Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And today, we will be discussing about the basic muscular attachments which are present on the scapula. So, we have discussed about the external features in the previous class. So, I will just briefly go through the external features and then we will look into the muscular attachments. We will find which muscles are originating from the scapula as well as which muscles are getting inserted onto the scapula. So, as we have discussed, the scapula is a flat triangular bone. It is having three angles, superior, inferior and lateral angle. Then we have three processes. The three processes are the acromion process, the coracoid process and the spinous process, which is projecting like a shell or backwards from the dorsal aspect. And the spinous process divides the scapula into two compartments. The dorsum of the scapula is divided into supraspinous fossa and an infraspinous fossa and you can find a glenoid cavity here which will be articulating with the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint. So these things we have discussed in the previous class. So additional to that, the, in the glenoid cavity, if you just observe the superior aspect and the inferior aspect, you will find two tubercles there. So the one which you can see on the part above this glenoid cavity is termed as the supraglenoid tubercle which has been marked as red here, so you can see it above the glenoid cavity, that is nothing but the supraglenoid tubercle. And below the glenoid cavity, you can see another small projection, the tubercle, that is called as the infraglenoid tubercle. So these are the two points that we have covered in the last class. So one more thing, the spinous process meets the medial border, the medial border is nothing but which connects the superior angle with that of the inferior angle. So, at the point where the spinous process reaches and meets the medial border, this area is called as, this triangular area is called as the root of the spine, the root of spine of scapula. So, these are some important points that you should know in order to explain the muscular attachments. So, let's see the attachments on the costal surface first. So, we have taken the costal surface and on the costal surface or the ventral surface, we have two muscular attachments. The first one is the bigger one which covers the whole subscapular fossa. Almost the whole area of the subscapular fossa is covered by this muscle. So the muscle which originates from the subscapular fossa is termed as the subscapularis muscle. So the red color area represents the subscapularis muscle. And you can see a blue colored rim over here. That is nothing but the lateral margin, the medial margin of the costal surface and that denotes the insertion point of a very important muscle that is termed as the serratus anterior. So to define that, we have the serratus anterior inserted to the medial margin of the costal surface of scapula. So this is the insertion point of the serratus anterior muscle and we can take the coracoid process. So here you can see I have marked it with red color. So there are many muscles arising and getting inserted to the coracoid process. So we will be discussing two of them. One is the short head of biceps brachii. So the short head of biceps brachii is originating from the tip of the coracoid process and that will be like a going and joining with the long head of biceps brachii and later it will be inserted to the radial tuberosity. That we will be discussing in the further classes and when we take up the dorsal aspect of scapula, there are certain points to remember. We have the spinous process and we have the crest of the spine here. The crest of the spine which is having an upper lip and a lower lip and each of them having different attachments. So on the upper lip of the crest of the spine, the main attachment or the muscle that is inserted to the upper lip of the crest of the spine is the trapezius muscle. So the trapezius muscle is getting inserted onto the upper lip of the crest of the spine. While on the lower lip of the crest of the spine, we have another muscle which is an important muscle of the shoulder region that is called the deltoid. So the deltoid muscle and particularly the posterior fibers of deltoid muscle is arising from the lower lip of crest of the spine of scapula. And here you can see the acromion process, right? So the acromion process is having a medial margin and a lateral margin. And as you can see here, the lateral margin of 
acromion crosses will be giving origin for the middle fibers of the deltoid muscle. So, we have seen the posterior fibers arising from the lower lip of the crest of the spine and as a continuation on the lateral margin of the acromion process, we have the deltoid muscle, the middle fibers of the deltoid muscle rising from them. So, that defines the attachments on the spinous process and the spinous process divides the scapula into a supraspinous fossa and an infraspinous fossa. As you can see here, this is the infraspinous fossa and this is the supraspinous fossa. So, in the infraspinous fossa, you can see the red color area denotes the origin of a muscle called as the infraspinatus. As the infraspinous fossa, uh, the name itself suggests that the muscle which is originating from there is named as the infraspinatus muscle. Similarly, from the supraspinous fossa, you can see the red color marked area that defines the origin point of the muscle called as the supraspinatus. So, the supraspinatus arises from the supraspinous fossa and here on the medial margin, you can see three marked areas. We have the upper marked area, then a middle small marked area and the lower lengthier area. So, these three points denotes the insertion points of three muscles. They are the first one which extends from the superior angle till the root of the spine. This first one is nothing but the levator scapulae. So, the levator scapulae muscle is getting inserted to the medial margin on the dorsal aspect of scapula, particularly between the superior angle and the root of the spine of scapula. And at the point of root of spine of scapula, we have another attachment and that muscle is named as rhomboidus minor, the rhomboidus minor. And below the root of the spine, extending till the inferior angle, we have a long, that a flattened piece of muscle which is getting inserted here, which is named as the rhomboidus major muscle. So, we have seen three muscles on the medial border, the levator scapulae, then the rhomboidus minor and the rhomboidus major. So, I hope it is clear for you. Then we have the lateral margin of the dorsal aspect and we can see the impressions of musculature here and on the inferior angle we have a muscle arising from there that is the latitudinous dorsi and just above that inferior angle from the lower one third you can see a muscle which is rising and that is termed as the teres major muscle and above the teres major muscle you can see two markings here but it is actually single muscle which is separated by a small groove through which the vessels will be passing 